we did go yeah. in and attack Syria. We would have done it more, except we exposed that they were using false flag incidents to try the the, uh, the sarin gas, supposedly, right. that was released. They, they tried to use things like that to up the war. It would have been more refugees, would have been more destruction. Well, and Obama wanted to go in, too. Obama yeah, wanted to exactly. go in, and we had the military stand down and said, we're not going to be ISIS's air force. Yes. We're not going to do it. Yes. And so he's echoing the same things as Obama, which I think is just totally despicable. It underscores the fact that we don't really have a choice right. in this. That all of these guys are they're not outsiders. They're not talking about anything different. Ben Carson, Donald Trump, they're not saying anything that the other guys haven't already said in terms of our foreign policy, in terms of civil liberties. Have you heard any of them talk about this security theater? Have right. you heard any of them propose anything that would give us our constitutional rights back? They ask these gotcha questions like it's a, a game show about the political parties of Israel. That doesn't matter. Yeah. If they don't know or care about the Constitution, about our Bill of Rights, ask them about that. Yeah. Ask them if they can recite yes. one of the amendments in the Bill of Rights. Okay. And the Seventh they, Amendment. <laughs> exactly. you know, that, yeah, what do you think that means? Yeah, exactly. And that and that's the problem. It is the presidential reality show, as Gerald Salente yeah. said and others. <laughs> it, it really, I know people are putting a lot of eggs behind Donald Trump, and he's saying some things that need to be said, and it's great that that stuff's getting out there in the uh, public arena. But at the end of the day, when you're getting that high up, you know, if Trump was really going to be a, an agent of change, a positive change to get yeah. rid of what's going on with the Federal Reserve and all that, he would either be killed or he would be destroyed politically. That's right. Cool. He's been funding it on the other end. He's been one of the people driving it, buying politicians. But I want to get back to this TSA thing for a moment, yeah. because one of the things I think you notice that the guy walked away. Right. We set up to him. I wasn't going to put that camera down. You cannot allow them to define what your country is. You cannot make them force you through the machines. If they force you through the machines, they're going to force you into the concentration camps. Yep. They're going to force you into the showers one day. You have to stand up. When we go through this, when we opt out, we're the only ones doing it anymore. I don't see anybody doing it. That's one of the reasons why this guy got so indignant about it was yeah. because we opted out in the first place. This is so unusual. They had to go get a supervisor to come do it because Americans have accepted this as reality that they live in. So when we go through this, we try to throw a monkey wrench in the system. I know that it's not much, but it's a monkey wrench. But we throw a little plastic hollow monkey wrench when one person does it or one family does it. It's easily crushed. If the masses would stand up and say, we're opting out, we've tried to do this with people with the opt out, we've organized that twice. Mm -hmm. Let's everybody opt out on this one day. The first time they were very scared about it. Right. They just completely opened up yeah. all the gates and let everybody go through because they thought it was going to be a massive revolt against that. So they're concerned about that. We see every time people stand up to government, whether it's the Bundy Ranch or whether it's other places, they always will back down when you're in the right. And we're in the right. We have the law. We have the Constitution on our side. And you stood there. You didn't yell. You got in his face, but yeah. you did it very, uh, you did it very <laughs> politely. And, uh, and you and explained yourself. Yeah. And uh, what you did, it should be a model for people on how they should film uh, the TSA and opt out. I mean, that this is, that's a model uh, a strategy that you used. Well, thanks. I, there was an article we had up yesterday. I didn't have a chance to look at it because we we're traveling, but there was a pastor who stood up to a, an officer who was telling them that they had to go to the designated free speech area. You don't oh, yeah. have designated free speech areas. The First Amendment is not an area. That was a sign that was up at the Bundy Ranch. That got a lot of people upset, but we we get used to these things. At first, people push back against it. Right. Then they get used to it. And we've seen this free speech suppression going on at every one of the political conventions, Democrat and Republican, for the last several cycles. They take everybody who is there to protest, and they stick them in a cage now. Yeah, in yeah. a cage, not just enough to remove them away from the front of the a place where they could be seen, but to put them in a cage. That's what we've done to our rights. We've put them in a cage. We've turned everything upside down. The Constitution was meant to cage in the government, not the people. And now the people are using, if they're allowed to use their First Amendment, it's from a cage. And then we tell people that we have to go to war and fight these other people to preserve our rights and our freedom when here at home we're systematically destroying what, you know, has is, is really been a 200-plus year experiment. Now. Yes, you yes. Know, and it's, it's really a shame. Uh, we got a few more minutes left. I want to get to this. Garbage trucks begin to recording license plates for law enforcement. So there now the go. garbage man's going to be the new uh, <laughs> the new secret police. And uh, I have a clip. This is from Activist Post. They had a clip in here from the local uh, television station. In, uh, it's in uh, Silicon Valley. And uh, let's roll that first clip. 
a different way to fight crime in a city facing a shortage of police officers, but now San Jose is considering equipping garbage trucks with license plate readers as an extra set of eyes on the streets. Never thought of it that way, but, uh, you know, we're, we live in a different world. Never in a million yeah, years did Steve Jones of Garden City Sanitation think his garbage trucks could be used for anything more than to pick up trash, let alone a crime-fighting tool. I mean, that'd be a pretty good day if we ended up having to drive by a car that uh, was used to abduct a child and that child got saved. Help with Amber Alerts and tracking stolen cars. Reasons the city of San Jose is exploring mounting license plate readers on garbage and recycling trucks. There you go. You know how much they're going to cost? $15,000 a piece. You think they're concerned about stolen vehicles or lost no, children? No. No, it's going to be not. about serving warrants and giving people tickets. That's right. That's what it's going to be That's about because right. they're going to go by and say, oh, you were parked illegally. Mostly tickets. Ticket. Yeah. Mostly tickets. That's it's what it's be all going to be about. It's exactly. nothing has nothing to do with safety. It has nothing to do with finding stolen cars. They're not going to find one stolen car. But they always use it as safety. Right. Again, when we were in the airport, every couple of minutes, there's a loop from the TSA. Safety is our number one concern. It's not my number one concern. We've gone from a country where our founders said, give me liberty or give me death, to this country where it's like safety, throw everything under the, under the bus for safety, mm -hmm. literally under the bus. Safety, safety first. Now. Yeah. yeah, but you know what? When you do that, when you give up your liberty, what are you? You're a slave. You're a prisoner. Prisoners and slaves are never safe. And you deserve neither. If you yeah. give up your liberty That's for right. security, you will get and deserve neither. That's your right. liberty or security. Remember that out there when you are going through those TSA lines. If you're not opting out, you should be. And film it. Film the pat down. They don't like it. That's fine. That's They got cameras everywhere. All right? Film your opt outs. Put them up on YouTube. Get other people involved. All right, we got one more segment left. It's the overdrive hour of the Alex Jones Show. Stay tuned. Well, I wanted to take calls this last segment, but Jakari Jackson ran in here and threw David Knight out. He's got some gun news we're going to get to. So, uh, Eric, Wesley, Sherry, Joshua, and Donna, sorry. I'm, although, man, Donna's got a, a, a kid. Looks like her son Donna. died. I know, it's, I know it's important. Yeah, let's go to Donna. This is, this is pretty serious. Let's go to Donna real quick. She's been holding. Uh, Donna, what's your story? This, this seems really sad. I wanted to warn parents about teachers and, and school officials who like to say that their children shouldn't be active or ask too many questions. That happened to my son when he was, he was diagnosed with ADHD when he was in, in the fifth grade. And um, eight years ago, he passed away at 19. Um, the ADHD drugs just really, uh, just really ruined him. And... I grew up in that era with the propaganda that whole just say no thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and he tried to tell me that marijuana made him feel better. But every time I caught him smoking, I'd throw him in rehab. And then every time I'd throw him in rehab, they'd put him on an antidepressant. So instead of the ADHD drugs, then we added the, that on top of it. And I don't want any parent to ever have to go through what I did or my husband did. When you have to bury a child, it changes you and you're going to fight <laughs> all you can for the children because it's speed. They're giving these kids mm -hmm. speed. Yeah. And I know the doctors know that. It's barbiturates. Right the yeah. doctor's assistant, it just makes no sense. And so that was my message. And you guys are doing a great job. I won't keep you. Um, and I'm so sorry you had to go through that, David. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and, and, and you're doing a great job. Love the fourth hour. Well, appreciate it. Tell your friends and family about it. I definitely want to take more calls to especially get stories like yours because we got to warn people out there when when uh, they're pushing these drugs on us, we have to be able to stand up and, and have the, the information to know that you're not alone when you want to fight back and say no, because there's other people out there that either didn't say no or are, they're learning from their mistakes or did say no mm -hmm. in, in time. So uh, very sorry to hear that, Donna. God bless you. Thank you for calling. You've got some gun news. It looks like, uh, what, what state is it they want to? This is in Boston, so okay. Massachusetts. Uh -huh. uh, they, they're they running this program up, up there where they're mailing legal gun owners and asking them to turn in their weapons or, you know, come to the gun buyback and they'll give you a little $300 gift wow. certificate. How do they know they have guns? Well, that's a very interesting <laughs> question, Rob, because every time we talk to these people say, we want more gun control, you guys are conspiracy theorists to say that there's some type of gun registry. Well, just like you mentioned, how do they know who has a gun if yeah. there is no such thing as a gun registry? The uh, you know, I'll tell you, the ATF or the FBI, they always destroy this information X number of days after it's been completed. But somebody got a hold of this information, just like we saw in New York last year. It must year. have been going through Hillary's server. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what it was. Yeah. Just like we saw uh, 
last year in New York, uh, Project Veritas did a mm -hmm. video about it, how they had uh, the concealed carriers, all their information in the database, and some newspaper published it. And then Project Veritas right. goes it out to the house. It's like, hey, you want to put this gun-free zone sign in your front yard? Yeah. No, I don't want to do that. Somebody's going to break in. You think? Wow. <laughs> surprise, surprise, surprise. Just basic common sense. But uh, to say something real quick about yep. the TSA, which you and David were talking about, I had an experience the last time I got on the plane. I think we went to uh, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. uh, I was went, going through the pat down, and the guy actually opened my bag. And the silliest thing I've ever seen the TSA do, they opened a can of Altoids. They were shaking the can of Altoids trying to see what was inside. I was like, bro, it's, it's Altoids. Yeah. <laughs> and they take stuff out of my bag, and they're rubbing down my uh, camera batteries with the oh, wand yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I'm just, <laughs> it's just the most ridiculous stuff. What you got here, boy? Yeah, just just silliness. It's a ridiculous airport. society we're living in now, and we have to fight back or it's only going to get more ridiculous. They're going to start telling you what to say, how to say it, who to talk to, who not to talk to. We have to stand up, and that's why we're here, and that's why we're doing the fourth hour to get five hours of programming a day oh, here at Infowars.com, Central Te Texas Command Center. I'm Rob Dew. That's Jakari Jackson. Thanks for watching. Become a PrisonPlanet.tv member today. It's the way you support us. Thanks for watching.